Good happy Tuesday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to this special edition of your 2016 statewide primary election results coverage. The polls are now closed and results are trickling into our newsroom and um, we'll find out each side for your U.S. Senate Governor in 1st District and 2nd District Congress. And let me tell you who will be on each side. Um, for your U.S. Senate GOP primary, it's Kelly Ayotte, Jim Rubens, Tom Islier, Stanley Elliman, and Gardy Belloni. For the governor on your Dem primary, Colin Van Otis, Michael St Steve Metunier, Mark Connolly, Ian Freeman, and Derek Dexieri. For the GOP for governor, it's Ted Gastis, Chris Sununu, Frank Edelman, Jeannie Forstier, and Jonathan Levy. For U.S. District GOP primary, East and South, Rich Ashu, Frank Ginta, Michael Klotz, Robert Risley, and Jamison Gardet. For your U.S. House District GOP, West and North, Jim Lawrence, Jack Flanagan, Andy Martin, Walter Kelly, Eric Izier and Naswell, Casey, and J. Mercier. Those are all the candidates, and we're going to be getting results throughout the night, and we'll let you know who wins for governor and um, for U.S. District for first and second, and U.S. Senator. And then those results that we get will be, um, they'll be on the big ballot in November. So let's play a video for you guys now. Um, voters hit polls for primary day in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to the video. is hard. But earning unlimited 1.5% cash back everywhere with Quicksilver is simple. What's in your wallet? Well, Sean, we're here at Ward 1 in Manchester, which is generally one of the busiest wards in the state. Now, there are 6,385 registered voters. So far, they have had over 1,000 voters cast ballots, and that means with still 17, or excuse me, seven hours to go, they're at about 17%. 6 a.m. in Manchester and the polls were open, and while there were a few voters waiting, turnout overall was light. Well, I came out because I think it's important if you're going to be living in Manchester and uh, in the state of New Hampshire to at least participate in voting. Education is a huge issue, I think, in this city. That's important. Of course, the drug issue. The Secretary of State is predicting that turnout will be around 23 percent, which he says is on the high end for a modern state primary. In Merrimack, morning turnout was also fairly light. For some, the chance to cast a vote is something they never take for granted. I'm a, a former refugee from the communistic uh, world. So for me, uh, to come and vote is of yeah, great importance. Others had specific issues on their mind. Mainly to keep on with the uh, affordable um, health care <laughs> and uh, not see it wiped out. There are many, many people that 
have been helped because of that. I think it's important to vote. Um, it's a big election, getting us ready for November. And that could be said for the town as well. Back during the presidential primary, people waited for hours in Merrimack. Others gave up in disgust as there were long lines to even get to the polls. Now, the town has three polling stations instead of one, and the chair of the town council says today is a good test. And I'm foreseeing this as an opportunity to identify any issues that we can tweak before November. As you take a live look at the voting going on here in Ward 1 in Manchester, once again, the polls here in Manchester are open until 7 o'clock tonight, and we will have complete wrap-up and coverage of primary day in New Hampshire, beginning at News 9 at 8. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR, News 9. Yeah. Okay, and there you saw, um, voters out today voting for this primary day in New Hampshire. Granite Staters vote on crowded governor races. Let's take a listen to the video. Did you know that now when you use this to pay for this, every 10th ride is free? Simple as that. What's in your wallet? Well, Josh, this is a race and a candidate to watch. Today, Chris Sununu voted in his hometown of Newfields before heading over to uh, talk with voters and hit the polls and make a number of visits across the state, including at Bedford High School. Sununu is, of course, the son of a former governor and the brother of a former U.S. senator, and he is reviving a political organization that has had quite a bit of electoral success in the past. But he's shying away from all that talk, saying this race isn't about a family name, it's about issues. Nonetheless, win or lose, Chris Sununu's fate will be a big story tonight. For now, I'm Adam Sexton, live in Greenland. Let's head over to the Queen City, where Amy Cavino is live at Ted Gatz's campaign headquarters. The dairy field has brought Ted Katz's good luck since his first mayoral victory back in 2009. He's hoping for a repeat performance tonight. We caught up with Ted Gatz's at Bedford High School this afternoon, his 15th stop of the day. He's wearing his lucky tie and says voters are upbeat and telling him he's their candidate. Gatsis says he's known for accessibility to his constituents and for giving people a straight answer, even if it's not a popular one. He won his fourth term by a slim 100 votes, and tonight's race is expected to be tight as well. Four candidates vying for the Republican nomination for governor. And for more on one of those contenders for that Republican nomination, let's head up to Meredith and my colleague, Kristen Carosa, covering the Jeannie Forrester campaign. Kristen? Amy, we are live here at Church Landing in Meredith, where State Senator Jeannie Forrester will spend the night waiting for election results to come in. We did catch up with her earlier this morning at a polling location in Derry where she was saying she was getting some good comments and good feedback on her run for governor. She's the only female in this race. Senator Forrester has been at the State House for more than six years. She's been a member of the most important committee in the legislature, the Senate Finance Committee, which she now chairs. Forrester has also been a town administrator in Tufton Borough and New Durham, and she's a former executive director of Main Street Programs in Meredith and Plymouth, and now she says she is ready for the corner office. Now let's send it to the Frank Edelblue campaign. That's where Mike Cronin is standing by. Thank you, Kristen. And Frank Edelblue is hoping for a political outsider's victory tonight here at the Yard Restaurant in Manchester. Earlier today, the Wilton businessman shook hands at Bedford High School. He's an accountant and first-term legislator. Edel Blue describes himself as a staunch conservative, both on fiscal and social issues. Over the past year, he's been making a name for himself among established Republicans. He says it is time for a different kind of governor in the corner office, someone who will grow wages and eliminate government waste. And we will have live coverage tonight from the yard as the king watches the election results. Roll in. Live in Manchester, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. And turning our attention now to the Democratic race for governor. Three candidates are facing off here, hoping to be on the ballot come November. We have live team coverage of those candidate headquarters tonight. We begin with WMUR's Gene Mackin. 
And Colin Van Ostern's campaign, clearly confident, calling this gathering inside the Manchester Milliard Museum a general election kickoff party. We caught up with the candidate today visiting the polls. One woman asked him to walk her to the door so that she could vote for him. He cast his own vote with his family in his hometown of Concord. The 37-year-old executive counselor and former Stonyfield business manager campaigned on his economic plan, which includes extension of commuter rail service. Now, he won the endorsement of the state employees union, and tonight he told us he vows to be out meeting with voters until all of the polls close. One of his challengers is Mark Connolly. Andy Hirschberger is covering that campaign right across town in Manchester. Andy? Well, gee, Mark Connolly says that there are some key issues in this campaign, like the heroin crisis and education, but he says experience is what sets him apart from his challengers. Connolly is the former Deputy Secretary of State and was the Director of the Securities Regulation. He was also a state representative while he was a student at Dartmouth. Connolly spent the morning voting in Newcastle, then campaigning in Portsmouth, Manchester, and Nashua. He says the voters he's spoken to feel the state is doing well, but things could be better. Connolly says a victory tonight is a unified Democratic ticket with him at the top. That's the story from Connolly headquarters. Let's go over to my colleague, Cherise LeClaire, who is at Marshan headquarters. That's right, Andy. Thank you. Well, former Portsmouth Mayor Steve Marshan says his experience governing this city will translate to the needs of all voters and people here in the Granite State. Now, Marshan, a former Portsmouth City Councilor as well, now works as the principal at SRN Consulting as a public relations firm after a stint at UNH. Today, he met with students and voters at the Dairy Bar in Durham before heading off to Manchester, Concord, and Goffstown to greet voters. Marshan calls himself the most progressive candidate in this race. He fully supports legalizing and taxing marijuana. He opposes the death penalty and calls himself fiscally responsible. He'll be meeting with his constituents and supporters tonight here at the Art Space. They're expected to fill this room at about 7.30 tonight. Live in Portsmouth, I'm Cherise LeClaire, WMUR News Now. Okay, and those are the governors for the governor race. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more coverage.